Greetings, Marianne Markowitz. I think I'm live, says I am. <laughs> Who is today's presentation for? If you are someone who constantly feels like I just don't have enough time or I really, really want this, why am I not getting it? I'm so pissed off. Why am I not getting this? Or, um, gosh, you know, I just, there's got to be something more. Well, then stay tuned. We're going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is when I discovered dynamic meditation, this alpha state of the mind. And I love the visual I found here. And the internet is like the coolest thing in the world, isn't it? I mean, you can say, hey, I want to go research this and bingo, bango, how many answers can you find? And then you can keep drilling down. That's really amazing. But guess what? Our minds in this alpha state is even more limitless. So my question to you is, how are you using your mind? <laughs> Did you know that less than 20% of the population is consciously using the right side of our brain. And that's what we're accessing when we get into that alpha state. The, 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 the geeky beta state is when our eyes are open, they're collecting, they're taking everything in. But when you go into that alpha state, that's where you're kind of daydreaming, but you're, you're aware. So there are many ways to get into there. So let me just keep putting my little slides up here for you guys. Uh, why is it not cooperating? Oh, here you go. Okay, so less than 20% of the population is consciously using the right side of our brain. And I repeat myself because we learn from repetition. Again, think of the alpha. If you're one of those people who says, oh, I can't meditate. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll get to some of those at the end, but you do it all during the day, whether you're conscious of it or not. So seated meditation is not the only way to get there. It might be, you know, driving down the road. Maybe it, when I lived in Dallas, one of my offices was right by the Dallas or tollway. It was very common for me to say, you know, it's two o'clock. I feel like I need to get out of the office because I was frequently sitting there reading the Wall Street Journal and eating in the kitchen, which is bad habits. But I could go out and cruise down the tollway. Again, not a lot of traffic back then. And that was when I could get insights to, oh, this is who I need to call for my client. Or, you know, I need to go back and do a search using this string. And, and again, that's where I got my creative ideas before I knew about meditation. Steven Spielberg has famously said that his best thoughts come when he's driving as well. So there's, there's a reason why so many people say, oh God, I want to go on a driving trip because maybe subconsciously they're thinking, oh man, I may have some new wonderful idea. All right. So moving right along, our imagination is our image machine. So again, how are you using it? Think of it this way. Our images are universal. And um, oh, Aristotle, or one of those original um, self-help gurus, if you read any of their stuff, said that we um, communicate through images. It's not through, oh, you're speaking German, you're speaking this. It's through images. And our minds are very, very powerful. So when we get into that daydreaming state, that, that dynamic meditation state, then you're able to um, get into a, a mode on the right side of your brain where you're actually able to create new things. And research has proven over and over again that our minds do not know the difference between what is real and what we make up. It's kind of dangerous. So I always like to say we need to keep some training wheels on this brain up here. But um, an example I remember from one of my favorite books, the, um, the originals, um, Grant, can't remember his, um, something Grant, um, maybe it's Richard Grant. Well, anyway, you can look it up. Great, great author. 
But um, they did research on sending people out to make presentations on stage for, or, or literally, you know, presentations in an office. And if the people behind the curtain said, I'm excited, I'm excited, versus like, oh, God, I wonder if I'm going to do okay. The ones who were still nervous but said, I'm excited, excited, nailed their presentations. So, again, can you imagine something in your mind with a positive charge? Because if you can, then you're going to change what you want to change. And getting to the, the moment of change, our minds are an endless loop. And it's just like, you know, are you constantly looping bad reruns of two and a half man episodes? Can you train your mind to say, mm, change the channel? Is that thought good for me? No. Okay. Give me a new thought. And learning to use the, um, your imagination with your dynamic meditation develops that right side of the brain. That's again, that's where you're going to come up with your creative ideas. And so dynamic meditation, we sit down, we close our eyes, we start relaxing the body with specific cues. We, um, so once we've relaxed the body and we feel grounded, then we go into a place of nature that we love. And when we do that, we're cueing. Where did I choose? Well, I'm on the Gulf Coast. I love thinking about wiggling my my toes in the sand. I love the you know, with the humidity. I'm welcoming it because I went there on purpose, unlike today with my hair being bad. <laughs> okay. But every time you can get into that meditative yet aware state and start accessing these other mental senses, like here's here's a famous one so many people use. Think about a lemon and you cut that lemon in half. Just thinking about it, and you're getting ready to take a bite of it. What is it? What happens? Our saliva glands start going crazy because it's expecting it. That is the power of our brain. So think about three things that you've created, and they're in reality now. It might be, you know. I want a new car for road trips. We're done with full-time RVing. Now we want something that's just easy where we can drive 600 miles and not think about it. That was a thought. Got a new car in the garage. There, and, and that, you know, that's not always so easy to do right nowadays. And sometimes cars that you want are not readily available. We got ours last year and that's kind of what was happening, but we put it out there, bingo, bango, it's there. It's the same thing with relationships. I want a better relationship with my brother-in-law. Okay, so you start having the thought, and then it starts snowballing on itself. But you have to have that thought instead of the bad rerun of, oh, I can't stand this person at the office. This always happens to me. That's a very low energy. So again, think about three things that you've created, and then think about, okay, so it was a thought, and I've got it here. How cool is that? So then you can start building upon that. And, yeah, I refer to my coaching practice as brain balance. It's where we're learning to use the right side of the brain. And then you get into whole brain thinking. So here's a tip for you. Set aside the same time every day to do your meditation. And again, I'll let you off the hook. It can be your morning walk. That is absolutely great if sitting down doesn't sound like a good thing for you. But I invite you to do it first thing in the morning because that's when our minds are. And Carl Jung um, said that at the first 45 minutes of waking up is when our ego is at its um, most defenseless. So that's when, when ideas literally can start creeping in and you and if you start trusting, see what happens is you, you meditate and then you have these little hits and they're called intuition. Can now can you start trusting those hits of intuition? All right, moving right along. <laughs> um, so yeah, so set a time set aside those first 45 minutes in the morning. And, you know, it could be I get up in the morning, I'm 
I'm, uh, I've got three new things every morning that I'm grateful for. Uh, then you go take your 20 minute walk. This is so healthy for you, for your body and your mind. And if we get those two in, in congruency, then you're starting to access things on a spiritual nature. All right, that's it. I will watch for comments afterwards. I still have not mastered this um, live tool or else I would um, be interacting with you, but we'll, we'll move on past that. Um, thank you for your patience. And um, yeah, let me know about your meditation practice. Do you do it as a sitting practice? Do you like to go walking, riding a bike? Those all count, but bring something into your world so that you can start feeling that relaxation of the body and the mind. And then let me know what creative activity happened. All right. Thanks. Bye.